In the past few weeks, we've all read and heard something about the Greek debt crisis. Greece, home of Aristotle and Alexander, has now apparently become a country of empty ATMs. But how did Greece become so broke that they had to bring out an Olympic-sized begging bowl? This week, WAC and Epified give you the lowdown on what happens when an entire country runs out of money. And what does it mean for us in India? The European debt crisis has been brewing as early as 2007, when the American subprime bubble burst. Ireland, Portugal and Spain had to apply for a bailout. But Greece's problem became a lot bigger, when their government confessed to trying to cover up an international debt of 400 billion euros, which Greece didn't have the clothes, I mean the money, to pay for. The debt is so huge that Greece has since required years of financial help just to pay the interest. In the meantime, the tough conditions forced upon them by the EU, especially the Germans, well, that's left about 60% of young Greeks unemployed and protesting on the streets. The irony of the situation is that the Germans, who are being super strict with Greece about its debts, well, they are actually the 20th century's biggest debt defaulters. After World War II, the Allies waved off German debt worth the size of the country's output. Plus, Germany also got $160 billion from the US under the Marshall Plan, which of course helped make it rich and strong again. Maybe forgiveness isn't so bad. If Greece quits the EU, it would raise quite a stink around Europe and the world. So how much should India worry? Well, it's not just Greece, you see. The rest of the EU, who India does business with, that will all be affected. At the very least, exports will drop and imports will get way, way costlier. What works for India, however, is that families here naturally save more and borrow less compared to their credit card-riding Westerners. Even during the 2008 crisis, Indian banks remain largely unaffected because they didn't risk their money. Which doesn't mean that we're totally safe. Back in not so fun 91, India came very close to a humiliating default when we almost ran out of foreign exchange to pay our bills. India was left with just enough cash to cover three weeks of supply. We needed an emergency loan of $1.8 billion from the International Monetary Fund or the IMF. To get this loan, India even had to mortgage 67 tons of national gold, which was flown to London. But out of the bad situation came good. India was forced to take some tough decisions on the economy and reduce the government spending. Between then and now, things have improved certainly. But India still runs a current account deficit, which means that we import much more than we export. To cover the extra cost, the government must borrow money from the world. We came pretty close to the brink again in 2008. The deficit ballooned to 11% of GDP, which is the value of all that we make in the country. Investors got really anxious and began pulling their money out. It was because of high oil prices and a devalued rupee, which made the dollar oil prices even more expensive for India. India was forced into borrowing more money to import the same amount of stuff. India's national debt right at this very second stands at a massive $933 billion. Now that works out to roughly 46,000 rupees owed by every Indian woman, child and man. How's that for an eye-opener? It's huge for a country where the average person earns about 8,000 rupees a month. Apart from that, only about 2% of the entire population of India could qualify as rich middle class by world standards. So you do the math on how deep this hole really is. The decrease in oil prices and the economy growing a little faster has made that debt more manageable. But you just never know when it could all go wrong. That's it from us at WAC and Epified this week. Remember all this the next time you think that the government has money to give you free gas cylinders and free bus rides. Also remember to share, subscribe and comment below. Thoughts and opinions? Well, those are the only things that should be free. So last night on the dining table, I bounced some of these stories off my parents and my parents were just like, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. To tie around this colossal mountain, they chose a mighty serpent. This serpent was Vasuki. (laughs) 